So, um, I'm Helen Barraclough, Managing Director of Space Connections. Uh, we run the Bradford Science Festival. I don't know if any of you are aware of that. It's um, the UK's fastest growing science festival. That's what I'm saying. Nobody's argued yet. We went up 483% uh, last year in attendance, so rather pleased with that. As you can see, my Twitter name is rather embarrassing. This was from our first festival when we did um, Fifty Shades of Science as our adult strand. At the time, Fifty Shades of Grey was very popular. It has got a bit dated now. There we go. So the idea that I'm sharing with you today in a TED-type way is something that I've been thinking about for a while. And it's been, um, I've been looking for a chance to explore it. So I don't really have an answer today. So anybody can help me out, I'd be really grateful. But it's the creative conundrum. I used to work for the Creative Minds Project. I was an access to science advisor, sounds very grand. It meant I worked with museums, libraries and archives all over Yorkshire, trying to look at STEM, science, technology, engineering and maths in all of, the, all of their collections. And the underlying thing was everyone was saying, we all need creative people. We need to be creative. Creativity is everything. It was a real word, it was a buzzword then. And it's still there now, we need creativity. I heard it mentioned uh, a lot tonight. And it's true, it's been evidenced tonight. We do need creative people. These are some of the um, young people from the Creative Minds Project. They're making balloon-powered cars. It was uh, a Yorkshire-wide thing that went. The children in this photograph will be doing jobs that we haven't imagined with technology we can't even think of. And we need creative people. So where's the conundrum? Well, at most job adverts now, a lot of them, they want you to be creative. They want you to be a problem solving. In schools, it's, let's encourage creativity skills. Let's encourage ways to make children creative. But do we really mean it? Do we really mean it? Because creative people can be messy. You know, you see children with paint, it's messy. Creative people can be disruptive. They can cause change. They can challenge you. They can challenge the way you want to be. If we think about the traits that are, that, that are part of being creative, they're difficult to manage, difficult to work with. Sometimes creative people don't work well in teams, sometimes they do. But if we want to encourage these skills, we really have to think about how we can do it. And to do that, we need to look at some of the traits that there are. So there are some things that we can do ourselves. Creativity takes place internally. It takes place in our brain. And not surprisingly, the things that we can do to encourage creativity are sleep. And sleep not just to get the energy, but sleep to dream. Because when we dream, we're filing away all our thoughts. We're letting our imagination go. We're, we're putting things in places, and that's why we have strange dreams. Um, the other night, I was off to go to Mars on that one-way trip uh, in my dream. And I wasn't really that keen on it, couldn't quite work out why. I, mean, I don't know if it's anything to do with the TED talk, don't know if it's that at all. But it was that feeling of apprehension, nervousness. My brain translated that into, oh, I don't really want to go to Mars, but I suppose I better. Um, so we need to keep our brain hydrated. We need to drink. We all know that. Schools now all have water on the tables. We can manage that one. That one's easy. We need to eat well. Well, yes, every bit of us needs to eat well. We need to keep the, um, if we eat heavy food, Apparently, that causes the blood to go to our stomach, so less to our brain, so we're less creative. Um, and we need to exercise, and we need not to drink alcohol, because apparently alcohol is rubbish for creativity. It's a depressant. We also need not to get stressed, which I was surprised at, because I sometimes, I'm one of those last minuters. You know, I need that adrenaline to get me through there. But apparently, stress can cause you just to freeze, like the rabbit in the headlight. So no stress. So, you know, you can do things yourself to help your brain. We can do things with children to help their brains be, be creative. And then one of the key things that creative people do is they daydream. Now, how can you plan for that in a lesson? How can you, apart from teach triple Latin? I did have triple Latin and I did daydream a lot during that. I, I think that was a byproduct as opposed to a, an idea. You need to daydream. You need to have that time when your mind's just wandering, when the facts and your experiences are mixing with the, the creativity. And you also need to be bored sometimes. 
and we don't like being bored. It's not a great, if, if Ofsted went into a school and said, well, you know, that lesson was really boring and the teacher went, oh yes, I know, but I was allowing the children to be creative. I don't think it would go down very well. One day, when I am actually a Minister for Education, I will introduce National Colouring Hour. I think National Colouring Hour would be a perfect, um, a perfect thing where children and teachers have a quiet time of colouring in, develop fine motor skills, and during that time, the brain can go into the creative zone. It can go into that deep flow zone. It's also a time for the teachers to go around and chat and say, everything all right? How's it going? All those things that they don't have time because it's five minutes on this, ten minutes on this, quick, pick up the pace. And now let's all talk about what we've learned. Everything packaged into 40 minute sections, 30 minute sections. It's hard to be creative when you've got that time frame. And boredom as well. well I have a, um, I remember being bored as a child a lot, and I remember trying to build a paper aeroplane that I could sit in. And I remember playing f games with my friends where I could speak to the animals and she could fly. Back to the superhero thing again. That time when you have to create because you're bored and there's nothing else to do. Nowadays, the, create, the, the technology that we have, the way our lives are, we're very rarely bored, or we're very rarely bored in the same way. You know, we can now, um, you can now have an app for your baby. So you can put your baby in front of a, um, an iPhone. And the, 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 there was research on various levels, you know, both sides, as there always are. But there is a bit about children having the, the real world as opposed to the virtual world all the time. Um, you can now get an app for your baby in the womb. So you can actually start ed educating your baby through your iPad in the womb. Again, jury's out on that, but some studies have suggested that exposure to, to technology at a very early age for a very long time can cause um, sleep deprivation, delayed development, and other, other problems, which it might be that, it could be that. We have so many stimuli coming at us at the moment, it's difficult to say, but I just think it's worth, it's worth thinking about. So again, Look at the stimulation. Would you want your work, your people in your office to be bored? Probably not. You want to keep them busy, you want to keep them engaged, you want to keep them motivated. But should there be a time when we have just a quiet time out? Um, that's Lucy and Freud working at night. It's a beautiful photograph. Creative creativity doesn't happen between nine to five. It can happen at any time. And yet we often say to children and we say to people we work with right we've got half an hour to do some brainstorming we've got um, an hour to think about this it takes time to develop it, a, a lot of schools still when they're doing creative writing poetry writing it's like right we've got half an hour to write a story well maybe we need to think about expanding that giving more time let's go let's do something out there and have a week writing a story spend time developing ideas getting things working longer with science as well you know science is obviously the thing that i'm really interested in but it's 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 sandwiched into a very small section sometimes by the time you've got the equipment out it's time to put it away again and so it's th so people are doing less practicals you know, expand the, cu the curriculum have more time don't try and do everything every day my um my most creative time is making risotto Risotto for me is the perfect time to be creative because you can't do anything else other than very slowly stir, the, um, stir the, the moisture in. So you're just sitting there thinking and that's when the ideas come. Some people wake, I don't know if anyone here has woken up with the most amazing idea for the best-selling book that is going to change the world. Uh, but because you haven't got paper and pen there, um, by the time you wake up it's, it's forgotten. Some people that is their time to be creative. I'm not saying that an office should be open 24 hours a day so that the early birds can be there at five and so that the, the night owls can be, there at, can be there later. Just saying that perhaps we, we could expand how we see the problems and how we solve them. Um, another thing that creative people enjoy are surprises. So I've put this in. This is one of my favourite things ever. It's an anglerfish. An anglerfish has the most bizarre method of mating and I am so glad it never evolved to, re to reach us, 
just very quickly, male anglerfish up there. You see the little thing on top? That's the, that's the male one. He bites the female. As soon as he bites her, his jaws fuse, his body decays, he becomes one big throbbing testes, and his blood mixes with her blood, and, and she lays the eggs. I just think that's a, an amazing fact, and that's what creative people do. I'm not saying I am creative. I'm just putting it in as a... As a Oh, go off on a tangent, think about something else. There is another one later on. See if you spot that one. Um, and now for something that might shock some of you. And if you are offended, I apologise. But I'm going to use it anyway. I'm going to use the F word. And we don't like to use it. It offends a lot of people. Some people, you know, they don't like to use it in schools, don't like to use it in employment certainly don't like to use it in the public sector, because it's failure. Nobody likes to talk about failure, and yet failure is so important in creativity. I'm going to paraphrase um, uh, Edison and his light bulb. I used to work at Kellogg's. I'm very proud of making the nut cluster that some of you probably enjoy today in Special K. I know 99 ways how not to make a nut cluster. We had six weeks to do it, and it was a lot of time making our nut clusters. You have to fail to succeed. You have to fail to be creative. You have to see the problem and think of another way out. That's what so many people who've been up here today have been talking about. They've seen a problem. They might not have got it right first time, but it's very brave to stand up and say to people, oh, I got that wrong. I made a mistake. In my line of business, I have to apply for funding and I have to be evaluated. You know, when I, if, if someone says, how is your project? Uh, I also perhaps know 99 ways not to, how not to run a science festival, but I probably wouldn't be, dwell on those, because we don't. But it's, oh, by the way, the picture up there is um, the idea that bacon and maple syrup works. So it's bacon, play, bacon topping on your maple syrup cookies, which could be a failure to some people, could be a, a success to others. It's, it's not wrong to, it, it's only wrong to fail if you don't learn from it, or if you don't find out what, what, how, it's, how you can change and how you can solve that problem. Um, and sometimes failures obviously can be a success. So I refer you to, of course, to the Slinky. The Slinky was designed by someone who was making parts for uh, satellites and submarines, making different sorts of springs. He dropped one, it fell downstairs, and the multi-million pound industry that is Slinky was born. There are other examples too. We all know about Teflon and the, um, and the, and the glue on the post-it notes and super glue. Glue seems to be quite a, a popular one. So sometimes failure can take you in another creative way. But again, if we don't allow failure in our organisations and our schools, if it is the F word that no one dares speak, then we're not doing anyone any favours. Another thing that creative people do which seems to work quite well, is they, um, they follow their passions. They have a passion and they go for it. It's something they're really interested in. And this is something that does worry me in our big cities. At the moment, a lot of careers advice, a lot of the direction that our children are being taken in is business-led, employer-driven. Our children are the fodder of, of what the employers need, as opposed to igniting the fire of what they want to do and fitting it that way. A lot of it is, well, we need more, we need more technologists, we need more um, uh, technicians level three. That's what we're going to push you into. That's where the jobs are. That's where you'll be employed. Employer-driven, business-led, but is it right for the children? I don't know. I, obviously, we all need jobs. Obviously, we need, we need things for people to work. But when I hear people say, well, if you do an arts degree, you're wasting your time, I don't think that's true. I think that unless people start, at least when they're... I mean, how many of us are doing jobs that we... I mean, actually, I do love my job, but I have done jobs I haven't enjoyed. But wouldn't you much rather do one that you do? And so, therefore, surely it's better to encourage our children to follow their passion, to do something that they want to do, something they'll be creative in, and something they'll succeed in. Um, a creative space. How many of you work in offices which aren't creative spaces, which don't stimulate you, your learning, which don't stimulate your brain? 
different colours. That one's a bit extreme, probably wouldn't work for a Q Stage 2 classroom. But the idea of it being an exciting space where, where creativity is encouraged is, not, is interesting. Then, of course, what's health and safety? Can you keep it clean? Is it cheap to run? Can you back the floor? All those things impinge on our creativity or impinge on our children's creativity. And I, I'm thinking about getting the balance. When I was a teacher, I don't know how, if any of you remember this, there was a thing called Brain Gym. Anybody do Brain Gym? Yes? But did you do the Brain Rain? The, the Brain Rain, where you do that? And then in the middle of a lesson, you'd stand up and you'd do the Lazy Eight. And you'd do the Lazy Eight with your whole body. Because if you do that, it improves your handwriting. It's true. You're connecting your left and right side of the brain. I went on to training courses where teachers spent the whole day doing the Lazy Eight. The brain, the brain rain, that was it. And that encourages the oxygen to your brain. Does it? I don't know. This one here, can you all do this? Just, just find them here, two little parts. They're your creativity buttons. And when we did art or creative writing, we were all meant to stimulate our creativity buttons. Anyone feeling more creative now? I don't know if they work. There was a whole book written on it. I think every teacher in the land went on the course. And... Uh, so, and, and someone got very rich. But what it did was it sort of broke the monotony. So if you've been writing for half an hour, you do a bit of a lazy eight, get your thumb in doing that, you get, sit back down, your writing improves. Wow, it's amazing. But it's probably... I, mean, I, I actually do think it was just the getting up and doing something else. But all these things, you know, they're there for a term, they're there for a year. We don't build them in. We don't, we don't make them work. The... Um, this is someone shouting at someone to be creative. Go on, be creative now. You know, you're putting the stress on them. You're giving them a short time. Be creative now. This is the time you've got to be creative. Yeah, it's not really going to work like that. You have a day that is put into these sections, these small sections of time. You're not given time to get into the space to be creative. And then we can't really measure how creative you are anyway unless we see the output, unless we see... Um, a product, difficult to manage, but just go and be creative. We've got a creative classroom. So many schools, creative classroom, creative curriculum, everything's creative, apart from the space to be creative. Um, oh, here's another one of my favourites. Anybody know what they are? Yeah? They're, do you know what they're doing? They are mating, but the interesting thing is it's two boys. It's two boys mating. And the way they decide which one is going to be the female is whoever stabs someone first with a penis. Another evolutionary reproduction thing that I'm really glad hasn't taken over. Um, so I suppose what I'm, what I'm going to bring it to an end now, what, what I suppose I'm saying about creativity and the creative conundrum is you can put cre creativity in all places. You can make little changes, you can do small things, you could go crazy and make big, th big changes and do it really well, but that might be asking a bit too much of the current system. Um, in the Nissan factory, they task tasked everyone with finding a way to improve a little bit to make the boat go faster. You know, small changes to make things happen. So um, this is an example where someone worked out that by having the screws in, having a pocket in in the overalls to put the screws in to do that would save a few seconds from going to get them. Tiny small things, small, a small creative solution to a problem to make the boat go faster. And the idea of solving the creative conundrum for me is, can we do it? Should, should we do it? Should we say we want creative people, but not really? Should we say we want challenge and change, but not really? Or should we actually find a way to be brave enough to make the creative conundrum go away. Okay, that's me, thank you.